The Mind of Primitive Man is a seminal work by anthropologist Franz Boas, which extensively examines the intellectual capacities and cultural variations of different human groups, debunking the prevailing theories of racial hierarchy of his time. Boas, often regarded as the father of modern anthropology, challenges the notions of scientific racism and argues that environmental and historical contexts, rather than biological heredity, are the primary determinants of human behavior and thought. Boas begins by addressing the flawed methodology in the measurement of human skulls, which was commonly performed to draw conclusions about intellectual ability. He shows that cranial form, often used to rank races hierarchically, is not a reliable measure of intelligence and can be affected by environmental factors and developmental processes. Boas asserts that there is a wide variation within what were considered races, thus undermining the arguments for the inherent superiority or inferiority of any given race based on skull measurements. Furthermore, Boas critiques the use of language complexity as a measure of societal or intellectual complexity. Through comparative linguistic analyses, he demonstrates that all human languages have complex grammatical structures and vocabularies capable of conveying a wide range of human experience. He suggests that differences in language should not be seen as evidence of primitive or evolved states, but rather as the result of historical development and contact between peoples. Boas then addresses the concept of culture and emphasizes that cultural practices are not static nor the result of a single, linear progression of civilization. He refutes the idea that cultures can be ranked in a hierarchy from primitive to civilized, and instead promotes an understanding of cultures as diverse and evolving entities. Cultures, according to Boas, are shaped by their particular histories and geographical contexts, not by the racial characteristics of their bearers. He posits that every culture has its own merits and logic that should be understood on its own terms, not measured against a standard of Western civilization. One of Boas's major contributions in this work is his challenge to the idea of unilinear cultural evolution. He argues that societies do not necessarily evolve along the same path from savagery to barbarism to civilization, but rather take diverse routes influenced by their environment, history, and interactions with other cultures. He underscores the significance of diffusion, trade, warfare, and migration in the shaping of cultures, suggesting that cultural traits can spread from one group to another, leading to the complex cultural mosaics observed around the world. Boas also tackles the idea of race and culture being intertwined, clarifying that the term race should only refer to physical characteristics, while culture encompasses the beliefs, values, and practices of a group of people. He rejects the racial determinism of his contemporaries, arguing that the similarities and differences in cultural practices observed among different human groups are the results of historical developments rather than innate racial abilities. This premise sets the stage for future anthropologists to study cultures without prejudice and with an understanding of the myriad factors that influence human societies. In discussing the intellectual capacities of different groups, Boas insists that all human races have an equivalent potential for intellectual development. He notes that the achievements in arts and sciences by individuals from different racial backgrounds are proof of this intellectual equality. The apparent disparities in development among societies are attributed to differences in opportunity, cultural histories, and particular environmental conditions rather than any inherent intellectual deficits. Boas also highlights the importance of understanding myths and folklore to gain insights into the mental life of different societies. He argues that these stories, often dismissed as primitive or nonsensical by European scholars, are rich with symbolic meaning and serve as a window into the values, fears, and hopes of a community. He promotes the idea that such narratives should be analyzed as part of the culture's intellectual and artistic expression, not as evidence of inferiority. In addressing religion, Boas contends that there is no fundamental difference between the religious experiences of primitive and civilized people. He suggests that all religious expression, from animistic beliefs to the world's major institutionalized religions, stems from the same existential concerns and desires for explanation of the unknown. Religion, in all its forms, 
is a part of human efforts to make sense of the world and should be appreciated as a universal aspect of cultural development. When considering morality, Boas argues that norms and values are culturally specific and derive from each society's particular needs and historical conditions. He notes that ethical systems of so-called primitive peoples are often as complex and stringent as those of more technologically advanced societies. The supposed moral superiority of Western civilization is thus another myth that Boas actively deconstructs, pointing out that each society creates its moral framework based on its own circumstances. Finally, Boas calls for a reevaluation of immigration policies and national attitudes toward race. He warns against the dangers of racism, both in distorting scientific understanding and in promoting social inequality and injustice. Boas advocates for an inclusive society that recognizes the shared humanity and equal potential of all people, regardless of race or cultural background. The Mind of Primitive Man is a groundbreaking text that laid the groundwork for the rejection of scientific racism and the development of cultural relativism. Boas's rigorous scientific approach, combined with his humanitarian values, has had a lasting impact on anthropology, shaping how researchers understand and appreciate the vast diversity of human cultures. His work remains a cornerstone in the field, advocating for an approach to the study of humanity that is free from bias and grounded in a respect for cultural diversity.